Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can get real-time data updates and I'll be showing you how to do that by establishing a WebSocket between the front end and the server side. So to do this I'm going to be using the socket.io library on the front end and on the back end in Node.js and by the end of this tutorial you'll see this light counter incrementing in real time. So if a user separately connects to the site and clicks on the like button, it will update live for all users. So first for the front end, I'm going to import socket.io into my project. So you could install this via NPM, but to get started quickly, I'm going to import it via a CDN link. So when the back end is set up, this is going to allow us to establish a web socket so you can do that by simply calling the io object that importing the library makes available to you if you don't pass a url into it then it will attempt to establish a web socket on the url that the page is being served from so in this case it would be while i'm testing it locally localhost port 5500 but because you might be interested in establishing an independent server that's independent from the serving of the current page. I'll set up the Node.js server to run on port 3000 on localhost. So this IP is what localhost resolves to. And once the socket has been established, the server, it sends a connect event to the front end. And on that, I'm just going to log to the console, connect it. Now across WebSockets, you can not only listen out for events that are generated by the server, but also generate events that are sent to the server. Now, when I'm coding the server side, I'm going to generate an event that I'm going to listen out for in the client called like update. So this event is going to be triggered on the server side each time the like count should be updated and each time that it should i'm going to set the text content of the likes element to the new count and the new count i'll be passing it in to the like update event when it's triggered on the server side so for the server side code i'm working in a different project folder and i've already cd'd into this directory from the terminal now to run the next series of commands you need to make sure that node is already installed on your system so you can do that by running node flag v if this doesn't return a version number then you need to install node before continuing with this tutorial so you can get it for free from the official node.js website now before installing socket.io in the project folder i'm going to create a new node project so npm init double flag y will create a new node project accepting all of the default settings and now i'll install socket.io so the easiest way to create a web socket on the back end using socket.io is to use it as an independent package separate from a http server created natively or using express now from this package we want one of its named imports which is server which is going to allow us to create a server just using socket.io so you can do that by creating a new server instance by using the new keyword before the import and optionally you can pass in some options here so in this case because the request is not coming from the same origin as the server is listening on i'm setting all origins to be accepted to prevent a cause error now i'm going to store a reference to that server and i can use that to specify that when a request comes in to establish a web socket and that's connected what i'm going to do in terms of sending events or responding to events from that request. And you can do that via a reference to the WebSocket that's been created 
that's passed into this callback function. So on a new connection, I'll send an event from the server to the client and we're already listening out for that on the front end. The like update event and using the likes count that's passed into it to update the likes count on the page. Now I'll set the value of likes to be zero when the server starts. Now to respond to a user clicking on the like button on the front end, which sends a liked event from the front end to the back end. I need to listen out for that event. And when it occurs in a callback function, I can respond to it. So the first thing that I want to do is increment the global likes counter by one. And then I want to omit the like update event again, passing into it the likes, which is going to be the updated count. Now doing this, it will only emit the event for the current WebSocket connection. So only for the user who clicked the like button to trigger the event for all other WebSocket connections. You call emit again, but this time on broadcast. So when the liked event is sent from the client to the server, because a user clicks on the like button, we're updating the likes count and updating that value live for the current user and also all other users by omitting the like update event that we're listening out for on the front end. Now, the final thing that I need to do in the code to get this server up and running is to call listen on the server that I created and I set it to listen on port 3000 because that's the port that I'm trying to listen to on the front end. Now I can start the server and let's test it. So I click on the button and it is updating. If I refresh, then it updates to three and I have the front end open in a different browser simulating two separate connections like it would be for two different users. And as you can see, when I click on one window, it updates the count in the other window. So the data is being updated live as clicks happen. Now the event that's being emitted on the server side, it doesn't have to be in response to an event that's emitted from the client. It could be entirely generated on the server side. So I'm going to set up likes to increase by one every two seconds, independent of any WebSocket connection. Now to trigger a WebSocket event, every time this occurs, I'm going to create an event in Node.js using the native events module. And to start using it to emit events, you want to create a new instance of an event emitter via that package. And I can use the event emitter to emit an event each time the set interval callback function runs. And then inside the WebSocket connection, I can listen out for that event. So it's new data. Then we want to broadcast via all WebSockets that are currently connected, the new number of likes in this case. So I'll restart the server. And now if we take a look at the likes, they are increasing by one every two seconds. So this is an entirely server side generated event. Now the final thing that I want to show you is what if you want to combine a socket.io connection with a regular web server. So to do that, you first of all, create your web server. If you're using Express, you need to pass your app into the HTTP create server method. If you're not using Express, then you can just call the create server method without passing anything into it. And you pass the server that you created as a first argument into the new server instance that you create using the server import from the socket.io library. And now instead of listening via the socket.io object, you listen via the server and now the server, it can support WebSocket connections 
as well as accept regular requests. So I'll just send something back. Just to check that this endpoint is working. Now, before restarting the server, I need to install Express as a dependency. Now, start the app again. And you can see that we're still getting the live data updates. And if I check localhost port 3000, we're getting the expected response from the endpoint. OK, so that's it for this tutorial on getting real time data updates via a WebSocket using socket.io. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.